Week 7, problem 13. In the figure below, the current in the long straight wire is 8 amps. And the wire lies in the plane of the rectangular loop, which carries a current of 10 amps. <sighs> Dimensions in the figure are 0 0.1, 0 0.15, and 0 0.65. Find the magnetic magnitude and direction of the net force exerted on the loop by the magnetic field created by the wire. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Not really sure where this is going, but uh, I assume it's going to be interesting. I'm going to start throwing up some equations. Alright, so this guy is going to generate a magnetic field, which is going to then affect this guy over here. And it's going to, I assume, pull it either towards it or push it away. So... Start by finding the magnetic field of the infant wire. So the equation we use for the magnetic field due to a wire is magnetic field, I'm going to call this L for line, equals mu naught I over 4 pi R. Zoom in slightly. And this is going to be cosine of theta. plus cosine of theta. This guy's going to be 1. This guy's going to be 2. 2. It's going to be... Oh, oh, there we go. Close enough. All right, where theta 1 is go up to infinity. And I'll call this angle theta 1. Then I'm going to call this angle down here at negative infinity theta 2. Theta 2. There we go. So the idea is, when you go out to infinity, those theta 1 and theta 2s are both going to be 0. Cosine of 0 is uh, 1. Therefore, you have 1 plus 1, which will equal 2. That 2 will cancel out with one of the 4s. And you're probably used to seeing this equation right here. Um, so it'll be 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th, because that's what u is. That's what you are. <laughs> no, it's terrible, terrible joke. Don't pretend I didn't even say that. 2 pi r. Oh, oh, we got a 2 up here. And I'm going to call the magnetic field due to the line as 2 times 10 to the negative 7th i over r. Perfect. All right. So now we know the magnetic field that's going to be created by this guy. Let's see here. So I'm going to do the magnetic field like this, going this direction. Because if you put your hand on the your thumb on the wire, wrap your fingers around it, and that'll be the direction of the magnetic field. It's going to go oh, behind the wire and that way. And then there's going to be another magnetic, another portion of the magnetic field is going to be this way, around here. And these are going to be different strengths because the R's are different. I'll call this guy R1. I'll call this guy R2. I can make a better two than that. All right. Oh. Eh. Adequate. All right. So now we got that guy taken care of. So now we need to find out the force that's going to be on these two lines. So the equation we're going to use for this force is force. So we're going to use the fire incineration load bunnies. Fire incineration load bunnies is the same as force equals QV cross B. It's just you move the per time from the um, velocity to the per time of the charge, which gives you a current. So I L cross B. Oop. And the vectors are probably actually important on this guy since we're going to forget it. And the um, the L is the direction of the charge carriers, or direction of current, and current is defined as positive charges moving in the positive direction. All right, so we've got a bunch of positive charges going around like this. All right, so now change colors so we can get some contrast going here. Um, so here, we're going to have the magnetic field at both of these points going into the board. Okay, so I'm going to start with a line on the far left, this guy right here. So we have a current going up, so it's going to be V 
cross B. So we're going to have a force going this way. Okay? And then we're going to have, at the top, we're going to have V cross B. So we're going to have a force going up. Okay? Seems reasonable. Then on the far right wire, we're going to have V cross B. Can you see, can you see that? Force going out. To the right. And then at the bottom, we're going to have a V cross B, so we're going to have force going down. Alright, so if you look here, the amount of force is going to be different based on the uh, radius, how far away it is from the infinite wire. So the top and bottom are exactly, exactly opposite. They're exactly the fa as far away from the wire as the other one. Therefore, they'll experience the same magnitude of force in the opposite direction. So we can cancel those guys out. They don't matter to us at all in life. Now, force on wire, I'm going to call this side. Did I say this? This side is going to be 1. If I didn't say it yet, I'm going to decide that now. 1 and 2. The force on wire 1 is going to be greater than the force on wire 2 just because 1 is closer. So the magnetic field at 1 is going to be greater than the magnetic field at 2 because the magnetic field from the wire lowers the farther away it goes. So magnetic field at 1 is going to be greater than magnetic field 2 and we should probably find out exactly how much greater. So I L cross B. So B in this case is going to be 2 times 7 2 times 10 to the negative 7th I over R. So I'm just going to start writing this out. Um, these are going to be perpendicular so I'm going to do equals I LB because the cross product is um, what is it, sine? Yeah, cross product sine. It makes sense if it was cosine because it will start with C, but that's a trap. Don't fall for that trap. Kind of like when you ask ask someone, hey, is anything wrong? And they're like, no, no, it's just fine. It's like, nope, that's a trap. Something is probably wrong. Alright. Hmm. I L B. Hmm. Hmm. All right. So we know the current. Hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna do this for each of the wires. Hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna start with. So we're gonna say, I one, L one, B one minus. I. 2 L 2 B 2 okay now we know the I's and L's for 1 and 2 will be the same so I'm just gonna pull that out so it equals I L B 1 so B 1 is going to be 2 times 10 to the negative seventh I over R okay terribly done over R and the first R is was that C I will call that C over C minus make this guy a little bit bigger there we go and for the other guy it's going to be 2.1 times 10 to the negative seventh now it's 2 there we go 2 times 10 to the negative seventh I Oh, I think it was C plus A. But I'll check in a sec. Oop. There we go. Yep, that's A. So, the 2 times 10 to the negative 7th is the same for both of them. I'm going to pull that out as well. So, we're going to have I, L, I. Ah. I'm going to call this, oh, no, that's I, okay, I1 and I2, got it. Um, and 2 times 10 to the negative 7th. There we go. And then we're going to have 1 over C, 
where C is 0 0.1. 1 over 0.1, which will just be 10. And then the A is 0.15. So 0.15 plus 0.1 is 0.25 minus 0.25. That's very nice of them. They gave us, so we have 10 and 4. Nice. All right. So to simplify things, we're going to say, equals, I'm just going to take this right here and go, whoop, that is 10 minus 4, which is 6. So I1 is 8. 8. I2 is 10. L is, was it 0.5? That was usually 0.5. 0.65. That's inconvenient. Point six five. And we have a two, a ten to the negative seventh. And then we have a six. I think I was spoiled by all the convenient numbers. Alright. So I'm gonna call this guy right here thirteen. I'm gonna call this hundred and thirty. I'm going to call these 248. I'm going to call that 10 to the negative 7. There we go. So 130 times 48 times 48 times 10 to the negative 7. We have. Hmm, 6240. What do you want it in? Micro. Mm, okay, I'll just count zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Alright, so 624. 624 micro newtons? I think I say newtons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, we're probably good there. Nice. Yeah, I'm good with that. Alright, now we need the direction. Which direction matters? Alright, so we know that the left side here is going to be more influential than the right side. So what it, which, whatever force we have on the right side is going to be what is uh, uh, the dominant factor. So we're going to have, what is it? F equals I L cross B, or QV cross B. So V, which is the direction of the electrons, cross B. So we're going to have to the left. So oh yeah, yeah, I found it right there. So yes, the total direction is going to be to the left. Bam. Excellent. Yep, that's all there is to this guy. I say all it is as if it was really, you know, easy, but there's a reasonable level of understanding for this guy, so. But I'm good with it. So if you, you need to know the formula for magnetic field generated by a wire, and you need to know the force, uh, F equals I L cross B, of uh, on a current carrying wire due to a magnetic field. And then you need to know that the two are opposing each other and then you need to know some basic, eh, you need to know some maths. And that's what you get for this guy and on to number 14.